Hmm. Yeah, I think today we're going to work on fixing the carburetor. Wish us luck. We know we're shit. Yeah. Thanks for watching the Daily Drift. Welcome back, Drifters. So today I'm back in the garage finally, and I'm working on the RX-7. Uh, basically what's happening is... We've got a few things we're trying to chase down before we finish this up, and one of the things that I'm dealing with right now is a fuel leak. Um, fuel leaks are usually something simple when you're dealing with carburetors. On this, it's just gonna be two seals. I believe it's the uh, accelerator pump seals, because when I turn on the fuel pump, it starts shooting out fuel in places where it shouldn't. That's the last thing you want. I'll show you where it's at. So if you're looking here, you can see that there's a outline of where the fuel's been dripping through. So when you're looking at the carburetor down here, we have the accelerator pump uh, on the Hollies. We've got one here and then I've got one in the back because this is a double pumper. And there's a seal in here that can go bad and on this one it's leaking. You can see it's wet right there. I mean I can literally move this and get the fuel in and out of it right there. You can see that my finger's wet just from touching it. So we're going to have to get that fixed. We're going to take all that out change out those seals, probably the back one as well, just because I just want to eliminate that as a problem. So luckily replacing these seals on these carburetors is really easy. It's just a matter of basically pulling the carburetor off, which it's four bolts and removing the throttle cable, which we have to replace as well. Um, and then we're just going to take them apart and change out those seals. It's really, it's nothing too complicated or difficult, but some people who aren't familiar with carbs might find this kind of interesting. This is the one thing I do love about carburetors is that it's really, really simple to work on and usually it's nothing more than a little rubber seal that goes bad on them. The hardest part of a carburetor is just trying to get it tuned properly. You could do that for forever and still not get it right. But outside of that, it is a very simple setup. Our choke, oh fuck, that's getting power. Wow, that was dangerous. Holy shit. So I forgot to disconnect the battery and I could have just had a massive fire there because I just crossed the ground and the hot wire to the choke. Uh, yeah, so make sure your battery's not hooked up even though you guys don't have this set up, but I'm like a complete idiot sometimes. <laughs> Ugh. There we go. Now there's no power. All right, now we can take this off and then go get it finished up. Easy as pie. All right, so here is the carburetor. So first things first, we're gonna get all this gas out of here and just kind of let it drain. Yeah, look at that. May as well just let it go. Probably should have put that in something. That would have been the smart thing to do. Why do I do these things? Uh, gas is actually pretty good at cleaning. This makes more sense. I don't know why I didn't do this at the beginning. I am an idiot. All right. So these are the pumps you're looking for right here. You got one on this side, one on this side here. And basically the way that it works is, as you hit the gas pedal, these things are gonna get pushed down and it's gonna push this pump, which is gonna activate these little squirters here. You got these little squirters. You got one on each side, you got one in there, and then one down in this little hole here. Basically what that does is, when you initially hit the gas, it gives it this nice squirt of fuel. So my thought is that this is probably why we were having that hesitation right off the throttle. that's that immediate stumble we were having and I think it's because these weren't firing. So hopefully when we fix out these seals, we'll get a nice big clean burst of gas every time we hit the gas. So we're gonna do that and see what happens. <sighs> Luckily this is a job I get to do just sitting on my butt. It's not too difficult because it's literally just four screws. Dang Louie. Louie's being really loud today. I don't know what his deal is. Tell you, it feels good just to be back in the garage finally after this past week and a half, two weeks. I actually went, went uh, to the VA today and that was uh, a ton of fun. But luckily, I think I'm starting to really start getting my shit together, which is good because I'm actually in the garage and doing something. You know, it's good for me to get out here and just kind of talk to my buddy Louie across the street, you know, but anyway, this thing, uh, it's pretty easy. It's just a little seal. It's just a little seal. 
nothing too crazy about it. But these things can go bad over time, so I'm just gonna replace it because I think this is more what the problem is than anything. Just pop that back on there, pop this on top, and then just screw it back in. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, good lord, Louie. But it would just be fun to be able to drive this car again. You know, I'd really love to go to like some car shows and stuff. And I, you know, I was talking with my doc the other day and they were saying that that's something I should try is, you know, trying to see if there's any car meetups. So maybe that's something I could do just to get out of my, get out of my own little world and get back out there, you know. There we go. Let's see if this one's any different. Ooh. Springs all right. So both of them looked like they're not, they weren't torn, but definitely stiff. You know, it definitely got some stiffness to it. It should be a little bit more flexible than that. But sometimes that's what fuel can do over time. Yeah, you can see this is much more, much more play in that, which is what we want. That's the thing with carburetors. Everything's made out of rubber. It's not, you know, the seals are all rubber and plastic and stuff like that. So it's not designed to be in there forever. I mean, with a carburetor, you do have to reseal them pretty frequently, especially if they're in the heat, especially if they're exposed to gas, like whenever you get a gas leak, it'll wear out those seals pretty quick. But luckily, the parts on these carburetors are cheap, super cheap. I mean, I got this kit and it's got like everything you need for rebuilding a carburetor. And I think I paid like $12. So it's it's very cheap. That's That's the one reason why I do like it. It's because everything's super cheap to do and it's super tunable. You just have to kind of know what you're doing, which I don't always know. It's more of a guessing game, it feels like. A lot of the stuff you read about and you think, oh yeah, I'll try that, that works, and you try it and it just doesn't work. Because it's just sometimes, you know, everyone's setup is slightly different, you know? But now I think I can officially say that I've replaced every seal on this carburetor. So the only other thing that we got to do now, now that it's all been resealed, so we'll fill it up and we'll see to make sure that these squirters are firing like what we want them to. Hopefully they do. So I also need to adjust these springs here. In between the pump and that thing there needs to be about 15 thousandths. If it's not right, it could be putting too much pressure on the pump. And that may be what wore it out anyway, because yeah, but outside of that should be pretty good. See, and that's the thing I love about these carburetors is that they are so simple. It makes replacing stuff on them super easy. I mean, that took me pretty much no time to do. It's a little messy, but it's not too terrible. And you get the job done pretty easily. So, I mean, even these throttle cable things are real easy to put on compared to what you would expect. The only problem is that when I put the spacer on the carburetor, it ended up making it to where my throttle cable wasn't big enough and it was broken. So now I have a throttle cable that that sticks because it's just not right. But luckily I got a uh, I got a new cable that we're gonna run. So hopefully we won't have this problem where it's just broken and frazzled in the back. I mean, it's just, it's not very pretty. So I got this on here. The next thing I need to do is I need to check these, make sure these are at the right tension. Um, and then also hook up the fuel line and then we'll test to see if we've got any leaks. Uh, basically just see if this thing's leaking anymore and if it is then I'm just gonna sit here and ah, Just be a little sad, but that's okay. I love the fact that I got these AN lines in here because they make this whole thing So much easier and cleaner when it comes to setting this thing up So when we're looking at this we're trying to eliminate see how there's play right here I can move this up and down before it actually sets on there. I need to get it to where there's no play But it's not pushing down so I need to eliminate that play first Okay, so now what we do is we gotta take our fueler gauge and when we go full throttle, the key is that we need to see this pump arm go down slightly. So it should go, yeah, okay. And that's a 15 thousandths, so that's cool. So then we'll just double check the back and make sure that's good. Okay, cool. So the back one's good, front one's good. So I think our squirters are good and I can hear them firing. So what we'll do now is I'll go turn on the fuel pump and we'll see if we have any fuel leaks, which we should be good. Uh, but knock on steel, we'll see what happens. Let's see what happens. Well, so far, I don't see anything yet. 
No fuel coming out of here. Our fuel bowls are definitely full. A bit too much actually. So I'll have to adjust the float levels. But it would appear as though our fuel leaks are mysteriously gone. All right, so let's see if these squirters work. Ready? Oh yeah, I hear it firing. That's good. So that's at least one problem we may have fixed. Okay. So now the uh, carburetor's full of fuel. Check out these fuel bowls. You'll notice those are way, way higher than what they were before. Uh, I may not have shown it before, but they're supposed to be sitting right at the level of the sight glass. So those things were definitely leaking and causing a problem because now we have way too much fuel. So what we got to do is we're going to lower those float levels and then we should be good. But yeah, I mean, at least we fixed the fuel leak. We got a new squirter set up all nice and fixed. We're squirting fuel. So yeah, it's pretty good news. So I guess what I can do now is I'll just get those float levels down because right now they're a little bit too high. Um, and if I lower those, that should help prevent any of the spillover that's happening. Because I think that's part of it too is we're getting some extra fuel in there when we don't need it because when I changed out the spark plugs, they were really, really bad. I mean, they were literally wet. So that could be part of that problem. So I'm gonna change that out real quick. And um, yeah, we'll just see what that does. So luckily adjusting these float bowls are really easy. You got these two little set screws on top and then these nuts. These nuts are what help uh, basically adjust the level. And uh, yeah, usually a little bit of fuel will leak out and you're supposed to replace these little seals in there. But uh, I don't think I have any spares, but we're just gonna adjust a little bit just to get it where we want it. And I can never remember if it's right or left or which way it goes. We're just gonna play with it till we get what we want. We'll set the screws and then hopefully we get those float levels all the way down to where they're flush. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's turn it on and see what it does. Okay. Yep, they still definitely gotta be adjusted. I think I went the wrong way because they went too high. Okay, they're both full. And sometimes this happens and then you have to basically wait for the fuel to uh, evaporate a little bit in order to get this thing fixed. Well, maybe not evaporate, but I don't wanna flood my engine. So yeah, I guess I went the wrong direction with it, but we'll, we'll, we'll get this situated eventually. Just gonna take a minute. Oh yeah, what you gonna do? So I just realized that on the uh, Holly double pumper, the one that I have because it's aluminum, whatever, the sight plugs are held in with C-clips and I can't get them out to drain that fuel out. So I'm gonna try just starting the car and see if we can get it to run a little bit. Um, I wasn't really planning on starting it today, but I mean, we can definitely give it a shot. So I don't know, let's see what happens. Hopefully everything will be all right. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna do that and then I'll finish adjusting it and at least you guys will get to hear it. <laughs> it's at least better than nothing, right? All right, time to watch me panic. Uh. Fuel leak, oh shit, that's fuel leak, big time. <laughs> Jeez, Baliba. All right, let's just see if it'll crank real fast. Okay. Whew. Got a little bit of smoke, but I think it's residual fuel. Well, she runs and my wiring job wasn't a complete failure because now when I turn the key to off, the car stops. So that's awesome. I think now all we need to do really is just 
figure out those float levels, but it sounded really good. And like when I hit the gas, it was very responsive. Obviously that's not under a load, so it might be a little bit different when we actually get on the road, but we'll see here pretty soon. So hopefully in the next couple days, we'll be able to get this thing sorted. We'll see. So as you can see there, I got this one set up pretty good. It's basically right at the lip, but this one's completely flooded. It started overflowing out of here and flooded out the engine. So I gotta let this sit. I'll fix that at a later date. Well, we definitely got a lot more accomplished today than I really expected I would. Um, we fixed the fuel leak and hell, we even got it to run. So that's pretty good. Looking forward, we've got a couple of things that I need to address. One, I need to get the, uh, the fuel throttle cable fixed. So we're gonna install a new throttle cable so we don't have a sticking one like what we had. Um, I need to weld up some exhaust because we've got these two massive holes. Basically, it's where we used to have this crankcase evacuator, but that's that nasty little like ting, 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 ting sound you guys would be hearing in the videos. Makes it sound really shitty and they don't do anything anymore because they really just caused a mess and they didn't do anything and we're trying to make it street legal. So I'm pulling all that crap out. I have to install a bleeder for the coolant. So we're going to make some sort of bleeder in the thermostat housing so that way we can actually bleed the coolant. Uh, properly because right now the issue is that the thermostat housing sits too tall Like you can see this is taller than the radiator in order to bleed it We have to like jack the radiator up and even then it's just It's a nightmare, so I'm gonna make a little screw so it's really easy to bleed it'll be at the highest point and then no issues so I'm Trying to think what else there is um, basically we're just making this thing reliable for the next event because I want to be able to run more than one lap and I want to be able to show you guys what this car is capable of you know and that just means that I'm gonna have to get a film crew out there or something because I plan on driving a lot I want to drive 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 and shred through as many tires as possible so and I'm gonna to try to capture as much of it on this camera as I can I'm gonna to try to get some help with that normally I'm terrible about getting people to help me film I'm really good about filming other people but you know when it comes time for me to do it I need a little help so we're gonna make that happen though. I wanna get a, I wanna put together a good video for you guys for the next Rift event. So, got a few good things coming up guys. So I appreciate you sticking around. Appreciate all the positive comments we've been getting lately. Um, yeah, and it's just, it's been a good, it's been a good, uh, it's been a good day today. You know, we needed a win like this. So I, I really do appreciate you. Hope you all have a great night. And just remember, keep it nice and easy.